live from CNBC headquarters. On the money. Well, it could be a huge new revenue stream on the internet, a massive moneymaker online gambling. It's illegal right now, in case you didn't know, but maybe not for long. A house hearing today, a step towards making it real. Billions of dollars are on the table, and the opposition comes from a very surprising sector, Vegas. Our task force tonight on the rage over legalizing internet gambling. Jeffrey Sandman is a spokesman for the Safe and Secure Internet Gambling Initiative. Jeff's organization supports regulating and taxing internet gambling, as you may have guessed. And John Kent is a professor of business and legal policy at the University of Illinois. John opposes legalizing online gambling. Jeff, let me start with you. You support this legislation. How come? Thanks, Melissa. Well, the initiative supports it really for four main reasons. The first is that millions, if not tens of millions of Americans, want the freedom to gamble online in the privacy of their home. They can do that now, for example, on horse races. They can gamble in casinos and play lotteries around the country. And we believe that that's the freedom that Americans want. The second is that the current form of prohibition is futile. Americans have not stopped gambling online, but instead they're forced to gamble without the protections or safeguards that the legislation now before Congress introduced by Mr. Frank and Mr. McDermott. I'm going to have to let John get in here soon would provide. The third part is that this, can, this legislation can raise between 5 and $25 billion for programs like S-CHIP for children. All right, you're going to have to get back yeah. to your fourth point. John, go ahead. Uh, yes. Why are we even discussing this? Eighty percent of the Congress, a bipartisan bill passed last November. Uh, it was signed into law October 13. We have been discussing this for over 10 years. The National Gambling Impact Study Commission, the U.S. Federal Commission, said John. that this was the kind of legislation that was necessary to John, strengthen you got the your, illegality. John, I don't think you have your facts right on this one. This legislation was part of the Port Security Bill. It was passed in the final hours of Congress. There was no discussion and no debate on it. And in fact, this is not going to repeal the law. In fact, this would put in safeguards for financial John, transactions. John, what about the Absolutely. argument that people are going to do it either way? What about that argument? I mean, no, people are already gambling online. The, the American uh, uh, Psychiatric Association, the American Medical Association, the psychiatric communities call this the crack cocaine of creating new addicted gamblers. John, it creates that's, that's new addicted gam Excuse me, I didn't interrupt you, sir. And we look at the ABCs of what this does. First of all, this puts the worst type of gambling in every living room, at every workstation, and in every schoolroom. And we're already seeing double the addiction rate among teens playing Texas Hold'em. This is like drug addiction. This gambling is like drug addiction, and it's recognized as such. Jeff, aren't the federal people going to do it either way? Let me to the real, let's deal with the facts. I'm an attorney. Let's deal with the facts. The facts are Americans continue to gamble online. Gamble online. The facts are you can gamble on horse racing. The facts are we're not talking about underage gambling. In the, fact, this kind of regulation would put in very stringent protections and safeguards against underage gambling. And I'm not sure if he's talking, if John's talking about compulsive behavior of folks who play, uh, you know, video games. There's that talk as well. The fact is Americans are gambling online right now. The prohibition is forcing this John, offshore. John, smoking and protection. drinking are yes. both bad for you, but they're yeah. legal. I mean, uh, excuse, people excuse have me, a choice. I yeah, excuse me, I'm an attorney too, and we've been studying this thing academically for 15 years at least. This is lose-lose for the economy. It's lose-lose for young people. It's win-win for the lobbyists because the costs, and this is under testimony before Congress, all the studies show the costs are at least $3 for every $1 in benefits. We're seeing the, double the addiction rate among young people. The National Gambling Impact Study Commission said there should be a prohibition, okay, gentlemen. A, a moratorium on the, on the expansion of Look, any type of gambling Melissa, anywhere in the United States, and this is gotta, the worst time. we got to leave it there. I'm sure we're going to have another opportunity to duke this one out. Thanks to both of you Thank for joining you, us. Thanks.